Hello everyone, happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. Am I audible and visible now? Yes, okay, that's great. So finally, we are here discussing the first five clinical MCQs and I can see all of you writing down your scores for those who have attempted the quiz on the MedSynapse app. Uh, right, so great to see. I can see Lakshmi is saying uh, four on five, women, very good, five on five, SNMC Jodhpur, four on five. Uh, that's amazing. Anjali has got three and five. So, uh, I uh, hope, see, whatever is the score, basically, it is for you to understand, um, you know, practice some different MCQs from the routine that you have been solving and understanding whether you are applied to, uh, whether you are able to apply whatever you have learned from whatever you have read. And I hope um, you've liked this short fast five quiz. So, please let me know whether you liked it, like attempting the quiz before coming for the live class and then waiting, you know, to learn the tricks or to learn the strategies, the cheat codes on how you could have got that question right. Yes. <clears throat> okay is this video also on the app so tanu the same youtube live link has been uploaded in the app also in the featured classes or in android or the featured videos on the ios the same youtube live you can see basically you can see there in the app as well right so this is how the quiz is and if you guys liked it we are going to do more of it uh, maybe sometime five questions something like top 10 mnemonics so that's what we'll keep doing so you can assess yourself this was like today suddenly i got this i want to do something new so i did this on a very very short notice but then we will do it in a planned way in an advanced way okay so thank you ag thank you so much everyone so let's start discussing and learning this what you can do is you can keep revisiting the quiz uh, right whenever you are bored just revisit and practice the repractice the questions again and again and i've shared the pdf also on the telegram group already so you can make the notes as we are discussing it okay <clears throat> okay shri i'll do that Ah uh, yes, Dr. Gupta, for the yesterday's session, which has not been uploaded, I have uh, I just talked to the team and it will be resolved in some while. Someone has mentioned for immunology wala class also, the immunoglobulins wala. That is already I can see on the app that has been uploaded. Okay, so I think uh, all of you liked it. So we are going to do it more often uh, so that you get this good break from your routine and you can practice the quiz and then we can discuss it. Okay. All right, so let's start discussing the first question here. See, when you have lengthy questions like this, do you expect such questions in your exam? Absolutely, yes. Especially on the common topics like this. So try to uh, read the question in between the lines and quickly hunt for the keywords there. So look at the last line. Whenever you have a lengthy question, look at the options, look at the last line. See, from the options, you get to know that this is a question which is something asking me about immunoglobulin, something related to immunoglobulin, right? Then from the last line, I get to know that immunohistochemical staining of renal biopsy is likely to show granular deposits in the mesangium of which of the following, of which of the following immunoglobulins. So when I see mesangial deposits related to renal biopsy, something renal, I get a clue that it is something related to IgA, right? The IgA nephropathy, Burgers disease. But let us read the question now. The 21 year old man comes because of intermittent episodes of light brown urine associated with upper respiratory tract infections. This is what is the key word here, the clincher there in the question. Okay. So basically, you are TIs and followed by that brown colored urine, that is hematuria, is basically suggestive of IgA nephropathy. 
okay this is suggestive of iga nephropathy or burgers disease right so tell me that why is it iga only why not igg or why not igm why is it iga only so from the recent class of the immunoglobulins in medsynapse app we did see that the respiratory tract mucosa the git mucosa basically have what immunoglobulin do they secrete it is iga which protects the respiratory and the git mucosa the so next time in the question remember it can be a git infection also basically where a lot of iga is coming in and getting deposited in the kidney so remember that the git and the respiratory mucosa iga plays a role there the med synapse users tell me that did we see the bacteria which produce iga protease so you know when we discuss the questions kbmds fast five questions like this i try to integrate a lot of things and important topics तो मुझे बताओ कि कौन सा कौन सा है आई जी ए प्रोटीएस प्रोड्यूसिंग बैक्टीरिया विच बैक्टीरिया हैव वायरुलेंस फैक्टर दैट इज आई जी ए प्रोटीएस वट वॉज दैट इट वॉज शिन रिमेंबर गोइंग टू द रेस्पिरेटरी म्यूकोजा सो वट वॉज शिन देर स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस निमोनी हिमोफिलिस इन्फ्लुएंजा एंड नीजेरिया राइट एंड नीजेरिया नॉट स्टैफ ओके नॉट स्टैफ so remember the mnemonic there was shin streptococcus haemophilus and nizaria okay staph aureus nahi streptococcus pneumonia lung wala respiratory mucosa wala pneumonia wala streptococcus pneumonia okay so this is iga nephropathy and that is why the deposit here is of iga what is the other condition where you have urti followed by the cola colored urine but this is not within 2 days this is let's say after 2 weeks so if it is after 2 weeks it is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis if the urti is within 2 days it is followed by cola colored urine then it is iga nephropathy okay remember this point is very very important in iga nephropathy it is within 2 days in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis it is after Two weeks. Okay, so all of you have answered it correctly. Very good. So remember, it is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And what is the important finding in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis in the immunofluorescence and on light microscopy? What does it show in immunofluorescence and on light microscopy? Again, do not try to mug up everything because at the end it's very difficult if you have mugged up things. Try to understand and then try to make the tricks to remember that. So when it is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so it's related to bacterial infection whenever there is infection there are a lot of wbcs come wbcs coming in right so the light microscopy will show increased cellularity that is a lot of wbcs you would see those blue 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 cells on the light microscopy very good and the immunofluorescence will show starry sky appearance starry sky appearance on immunofluorescence absolutely right okay so remember that uh, this is uh, going to uh, give this appearance and on electron microscopy absolutely right that's your lumpy bumpy appearance pnp that is psgn lumpy bumpy appearance is psgn that is your sub epithelial humps okay sub epithelial humps is what you would see with psdn is this clear with everyone got this concept here so remember this is iga nephropathy that we are talking about iga is related to your respiratory and git mucosa this is burgers disease iga deposit okay all right very good very good everyone harshit costa laboni everybody you all are great right so let's go on to the next question what is the next question here again remember when you know the mcq exams they are not just only about how well you have read how many books you have read whether you have read reference books or no you might see students you know in reference books life mein kabhi nahi padhi hai but they'll still they can score good in these exams because it's a lot of smart work as i always say so use the smart tricks like first look at the option you get the clue that this is something related to microbiology bacteria then you look at the last line which of the following organisms is most likely responsible for these findings so the last line is not telling me what findings is it talking about so it is i read the line first line a male newborn 
presenting with vomiting and convulsions 4 hours after delivery and there is slight bulging of the fontanelles okay and there is slight bulging of the fontanelles so what are you thinking about when you have a newborn with vomiting with convulsions and the bulging of the fontanelles so basically what we are talking about is meningitis here in the neonate so we are talking about neonatal meningitis okay basically we are talking about neonatal meningitis and what organisms are important okay vision group b streptococcus that's uh, that's of course one of the important organisms but do you have group b streptococcus here in the option streptococcus pneumoniae is it your group b streptococcus it's not your beta hemolytic it's your alpha hemolytic wala. okay group b streptococcus streptococcus pyogenes they come under your beta hemolytic okay so neonatal meningitis like you rightly said it is dbs that is group b streptococcus streptococcus agalecti okay second one is your listeria is important and third important here is e coli okay third important is e coli so that's why we will go here with e coli okay the correct answer here will be e coli is this clear with everyone yes so out of that remember that group b streptococcus gives what test positive that is your camp test okay it gives the camp test positive that's what we need to remember okay listeria is gram positive or gram negative listeria is gram positive or gram negative quickly yes listeria is gram positive or gram negative listeria is gram positive bacilli that is gram positive rods gram positive bacilli while group b streptococcus will be gram positive cocci okay that's the difference in between the two right and e coli is going to be gram negative okay e coli is going to be gram negative when do we have specially the risk of a listeria meningitis in the newborn when there is pre-rupture uh, premature rupture of the membranes okay premature rupture of the membranes listeria the chorioamnionitis listeria comes into play there and what is the drug of choice for listeria what is the drug of choice for listeria yes very important remember the drug of choice for listeria is ampicillin okay this is frequently asked what is the drug of choice for listeria the drug of choice for listeria is ampicillin okay very very important okay so remember this for a neonatal meningitis it is your group b streptococcus listeria e coli which are the important organisms and so the answer here for neonatal meningitis will be e coli okay it's going to be e coli so if it's a bacterial meningitis quickly tell me what will you see in the csf bacterial meningitis in the csf what will it show what will happen to the cell count what will happen to the proteins and what will happen to the glucose in the csf yes because it's a bacterial infection the cells increased will be the neutrophils will be increased proteins will increase and glucose will decrease okay the only meningitis where glucose remains normal always remember that is the viral meningitis where remember that viruses do not eat glucose and that is why the glucose is normal and viral okay so yahan pe neutrophils badenge proteins badenge aur glucose kam hoga very very important csf findings in meningitis is very very important okay clear with everyone give me a quick thumbs up if this is clear with everyone yes tb has lymphocytosis tb has cobweb coagul uh, coagulum that will be present okay Yeah, you cannot forget that point for CSF that if the CSF glucose is normal, it is viral meningitis. CSF glucose normal and viral. Okay. All right. Going on to the next question. Again, this is something which is like must know and you cannot attempt to make this one wrong. 
it's it's a one liner question itself patients who have recurrent infections involving nizeria have deficiency in which of the following it is the deficiency of the late component of the complement the c5 to c9 basically that is forming your membrane attack complex in the complement system so if it is the late complement deficiency that leads to your nizeria okay late complement deficiency recurrent nizeria very very important is your late complement okay that's your late complement deficiency okay and remember that your deficiency of c1 esterase inhibitor not c1 esterase c1 esterase inhibitor deficiency leads to hereditary angioedema okay it leads to hereditary angioedema okay is this clear with everyone hereditary angioedema is c1 esterase inhibitor because of the increased levels of bradykinin here that will be seen okay right clear with everyone yeah and early complement deficiency right early complement deficiency will be conditions like sle okay we know that in sle the complement levels become low when it is more active so early complement will be less in sle okay so remember complement wala is very very important can you tell me a hematological condition where you have complement over activation hematological condition where there is complement over activation complement over activation is seen in which condition yes classically where there is uh, again the red brown colored urine uh, at night it is pnh peroxisma nocturnal hemoglobinuria absolutely right pnh basically is deficiency of cd55 and cd59 okay cd55 and cd59 deficiency the complement is over activated the complement is more active at night and that is why there is nocturnal hemoglobinuria so that is why in the treatment any drug that you know which will inhibit the complement and that's what we give in the pnh yes what is that drug that we give the complement inhibitor drug that we give in pnh what is that very good vision absolutely right that is equally zoo mab very good that is equally zoo mab remember it as e and c e matlab 5 and c matlab c so it is the c5 inhibitor okay by inhibiting the c5 it's not allowing the membrane attack complex to be formed the last component to be formed so it is inhibiting the complement okay so this is equally zumab the gene affected here is the piga gene as all of you rightly mentioned it's the piga gene which is affected here okay so that was about the third question never forget that nizeria is late complement deficiency c5 to c9 is nizeria going to the next question okay again look at the options you get to know something that there is temporal arthritis cluster headache cns neoplasia something related to cns let's look at the last line which of the following is most likely diagnosis okay coming to the first one there is a man who has come with history of daily left sided headaches that last for 30 to 60 minutes usually occur at night and they are accompanied by redness tearing and the nasal congestion okay this is very very important headache which is associated with redness of the eye lacrimation nasal congestion and alcohol seems to trigger the occurrence so this is classical of very good this is classical of cluster headache okay remember that this is classical of cluster headache you can remember it as cluster headache comes as a cluster of headache plus the autonomic nervous system manifestations right so that is basically the lacrimation rhinorrhea 
nasal congestion, right? All this, the redness of the eye. So, it's a cluster, it's a combination of headache and the autonomic symptoms. Classically, in a young male, awakening the patient from, from sleep, uh, unilateral and it is lasting for 30 to 60 minutes. The association of the autonomic symptoms tells you that this is a cluster headache. Okay, this is a cluster headache. Is this clear with everyone? Right? So, remember that this is basically cluster headache. Temporal arthritis basically would be a patient who is elderly patient, 60 year vagera, coming with the complaint of temporal is jaw claudication. Okay. There can be vision problem, right? There can be vision problem. The monocular blindness can occur. There is jaw claudication that occurs and it's a elderly patient. Okay. It's an elderly patient. Okay. Clear with everyone? So, remember that for cluster headache, the autonomic symptoms are very, very important. Okay, cluster headache will have the autonomic symptoms like lacrimation, congestion, rhinorrhea or the redness of the eye. That's very important here. Okay, it comes in the, it comes as clusters. Okay, and then, yeah, and uh, lasts for around 30 to 60 minutes. Absolutely right. Coming to the last question here, okay, this is the last question, a bit of a twisted question here. Yeah, polymyalgia rheumatica, the PMR associated. Uh, this is, you can see from the options, this is something related to the artery, artery, artery. So, you know that you have to now get your files from the folder of anatomy in your brain. So, now we have to focus on anatomy. The question is anastomotic supply from which of the following arteries will maintain adequate arterial supply to the left testis. So, if I want to understand more, a 64 year old man undergoes surgical repair of aortic aneurysm. During the repair, the left testicular artery is ligated. So, what will maintain the adequate arterial supply to the left testis? So, there is right testis, there is left testis and we have testicular artery supplying the testis. So, can you tell me that testicular artery is a branch of? First question is, testicular artery is a branch of which artery? From where does the testicular artery come? Yes? Testicular artery is coming from where? Yes, very good. So, it is a branch of abdominal aorta. Directly, it is coming from the abdominal aorta. It is not from the internal iliac artery. So remember that the gonadal arteries, that is the testicular artery, ovarian artery, these are very, very important arteries and they directly come from our main artery, that is the aorta. We are talking about testicular artery. If we talk about the testicular vein, that is when the difference comes, the right side and the left side. Okay, very, very important. Both the arteries, the right side and left side come from the aorta, but the drainage is what is different. On the right side, the testicular vein or the ovarian vein drains into IVC. So, how do you remember this is? IVC is present on the right side. It goes into the right atrium. Aorta comes from the left ventricle. It is present on the left side. Okay. So, remember that it is the testicular vein ka drainage which is different. So, right drains into the IVC. IVC is present on right. Left one drains into the renal vein okay left one is what drains into the renal vein okay so if this is the ivc you know that the renal vein drains into the ivc the left renal vein is longer because ivc is on the right so the left vein has to travel longer the right is shorter that's why for transplant we prefer the left kidney okay so what happens here basically is the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein, the right testicular vein drains into the IVC and that is why because of this direct communication, what is more common on the left side? 
what is more common on the left side the increased pressure on the left side so remember it is varicocele which is more common on the left side okay varicocele is more common on the left side if you have varicocele in an elderly person okay you should also think of what condition which tumor you should also think of renal cell carcinoma which is basically leading to thrombus in the renal vein and because of that thrombus this drainage is getting affected and there is varicocele so remember that in an elderly varicocele in an elderly patient keep the differential of rcc that renal cell carcinoma could be the underlying cause there okay is this clear with everyone so the question here is if this left testicular artery is ligated so what will maintain the blood supply to the testis which is very very important it is the artery of the ductus deferens because this is the artery which anastomoses with the testicular artery so testicular artery ri artery of ductus deferens ra hai and they form the anastomosis so if this gets blocked this gets ligated the artery of ductus deferens will take over the role and it will maintain the blood supply to the it will maintain the blood supply to the testis okay is this uh, clear with everyone right so remember the artery of ductus deferens internal iliac artery ke branches it has anterior division it has posterior division so what comes from the posterior division of internal iliac artery and what comes from the anterior division yes what are the branches from the posterior remember from the posterior is pils okay remember from the posterior is pils so posterior division gives ils what is ils it is ilio lumbar artery lateral sacral artery and the which artery the superior gluteal artery very very important remember it is the superior gluteal superior has p in it it comes from the posterior division inferior gluteal artery comes from the anterior division has been asked in one of the recent exam so remember pils that is superior gluteal artery comes from the posterior division okay is this clear with everyone yeah what comes from the anterior division of the internal iliac very good so you remember that lavoni that's great remember anterior is ant and remember the other uh, uh, animal that is mouse mousey so remember ant is mousey ant and mouse the story of ant and mouse is the story of anterior division ke branches so from the anterior comes the mousey what is the mousey here m for middle rectal okay not the superior rectal or the inferior rectal then you have obturator then you have uterine then you have superior inferior vesical artery okay the other eye is the inferior gluteal artery and the other eye is the internal pudendal artery okay the internal pudendal artery so remember which rectal artery comes from the anterior division is the middle rectal artery only okay the middle rectal artery comes from the anterior division theek hai is this clear with everyone so we have revised the internal iliac artery ke branches as well that is uh, basically from the anterior and the posterior division theek hai so quickly in 2 minutes revising the five learning points that we have learned today iga nephropathy has mesangial deposits there will be history of urti then having brown colored urine within 2 days itself next what you have is e coli is an important cause of neonatal meningitis the neonate can present with vomiting convulsions and bulging fontanel then we said that late complement deficiency will have recurrent nizaria infection c5 to c9 then we said cluster is a cluster of headache and the autonomic symptoms unilateral in a young male awakening from sleep there is lacrimation congestion redness and finally we said that the artery which anastomoses with the testicular artery is the artery of the ductus deferens so if this is ligated this will help in maintaining the blood supply to the testis okay and these are the branches 
of the internal iliac artery that we have quickly revised here right so that was about the fast five guys and uh, so the quiz will be available on the MedSynapse app later on also if you want to keep revising this as a quiz format you can do that okay and uh, this video link will also be available in the app under your featured videos okay and if you have liked this uh, you need to show that you have actually liked it by putting that thumbs up and let me know if you need more sessions more quizzes and more discussions like this where you have the pre-discussion assessment of yourself and then we discuss it okay uh, achha, daily to nahi ho ka vision i mean that's too much to ask for but i'll try to do it as often as possible we'll keep uh, doing the fast five clinical mixed bag mcqs or the fast the top 10 mnemonics fast five mnemonics something like that we'll keep doing that so I'll, I'll keep you posted on the telegram group like i always do for all the sessions i keep you posted there okay all right uh that's great so thank you so much i can see that you've really loved it and that gives me the boost to have more sessions like this and we'll keep doing fast five pyqs fast five clinical mcqs or fast five mnemonics something like that we'll keep doing short short sessions like this okay yeah all right apart from that on the app we are already doing the inict pyq kbmd which is going on the next that we have is physiology and uh, we will do physiology session tomorrow okay for all the med synapse app subscribers you will have physiology inict kbmd tomorrow at 12 30 noon in app live okay so i'll see you there okay thank you so much everyone uh, goodbye take care and uh, i'll see you again soon till then keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so much